I believe that this conference has already hidden, written history, that this conference will write history, but we need to make sure that it writes the right history. The much anticipated climate conference has gotten underway in Copenhagen at last. All the major participants have tried to tamp down expectations that there will be a major climate agreement, but the opening events were upbeat nonetheless. The really big barrier to an agreement is the question of whether rich nations will give money to poor nations to help them reduce carbon emissions, and no one is feeling all that generous these days. The Times has a team of reporters there, and I spoke just a while ago to Andy Revkin, and I asked him what the mood was like and whether people were more hopeful now than before about the possibility of a larger agreement. Most of the delegates here are just sort of unpacking their suitcases. Uh, it's a two-week process. Um, the senior, uh, the senior negotiators don't even arrive for another week. So, a grander agreement than what's already been uh, kind of hinted at. I doubt it. The uh, the president is already committed to coming on the 18th. That wouldn't be the case if there hadn't already been a lot of um, advance work to lay out. The, what's going to happen uh, because the, the White House doesn't want to be surprised, embarrassed, or look like they're, you know, the last time he came to Copenhagen, things didn't work out so well. Uh, uh, Andy, the Andy um, I yeah. know one of the big issues there is the question of to what extent rich nations can help n poorer nations reduce emissions. And more will be talked about, about that later in the week. What's your sense? What's the sense of generosity there? Do you think there is going to be headway on that subject? Well, since late November, there's been a number floating around of sort of a down payment of about $10 billion a year. Um, the rich countries haven't divvied that up to determine who, you know, how much the United States portion would be. Um, there was some hints from Europe that that would be money coming out, out of their existing foreign aid and not new money. And there were immediate sounds from the um, developing countries that that would not be very welcome. Um, and all that's kind of like, you know, trial balloons. Um, I, there's still a, a very big dif difference between the number that the uh, developing countries want and the number that rich countries seem willing to be able to uh, pony up. And just think about the United States coming out of a, a deep recession and with all the other political issues. Um, how how could Obama come back and convince Congress? You know, we already have a very low proportion of our gross domestic product going into foreign aid anyway. So, so, so uh, Andy, there on day one, Monday, what is your expectation about what's going to happen? What will come out of this conference? You know, having covered this stuff since before there was a treaty process, meaning more than 20 years, um, what I see, if you step back and look at the grand trajectory, is, is slow, steady motion toward constraining the emissions that are right now unavoidably come from burning fossil fuels and obviously forests. And it's mostly the diplomatic process so far has, hasn't really driven a lot of the change. It did create a European trading system for carbon and that kind of thing. But uh, emissions trends have not really blunted. They've just sort of keep on chugging and now developing countries are getting in high gear. So I, I think the process will be seen in the end just by historians as, as being useful and having contributed to the, an eventual shift away from unfettered burning of fossil fuels. But I don't think anyone can count on some grand punctuation mark coming here in Copenhagen or in a few months in Mexico City. It's, it's a progression. It's, many of the experts on treaties tell me this is much more like uh, the trade talks, which have been going on since the 40s than the old model of, uh, let's say, the, the uh, Montreal Protocol, the ozone ban, that treaty that was done in a couple of steps in the 1980s. That really was a, you know, we are not going to use these chemicals anymore. This is very different than that. Andy, thank you so much. We'll be checking in with you on a regular basis throughout the conference. Okay.